Welcome back to the channel, everyone. It's a beautiful day here in Utah. It's mid 60s and it's supposed to snow tomorrow. So I'm taking advantage. Gonna do a little bit of maintenance. I already uh, did a little bit on the crew cab today. And then I figured I should film what I'm doing. So I adjusted the valve lash on the crew cab. And so what we're gonna do is adjust the valve lash on the single cab. So let's go get started. Alright, so adjusting the valve lash on these uh, 6BT Cummins is very easy to do. It's recommended to do it every 12 to 24,000 miles, so I just do it every every year or two. Um, it takes about 15 to 30 minutes depending on you know how, how many times you've done it. Um, the more you do it, the better you get at it. It's just like doing an oil change. You'll get to the point where it's just second nature and very easy to do. So let me show you how to do it. I'm going to pop the hood. And then uh, first thing we're going to do is pull the valve covers off. All right, so the first thing you have to do is take each of the valve covers off. Pretty easy, just a 15 millimeter wrench. If you have a beauty plate still on there, there's a, uh, two little nuts that hold those on. Those are easy to take off. You just pull the beauty cover off. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'll catch back up with you when I've got them all off. All right, so I've got those off. Um, let me show you real quick. I just set the valve covers on the tailgate of my other truck. Um, keep them in order so they go back to where they were. Not the biggest deal if they get out of order, but I like to just keep them in order. All right, so here's what you're going to need for this project. You're going to need a torque wrench. Set it to 18 foot-pounds. You're going to need a 14 millimeter wrench for the lock nuts. I'll get back to that. Flathead screwdriver to adjust the valve. And a set of feeler gauges. So I'll put a link in the description below of a set. They don't have to be expensive. Um, you can go to any auto parts store and pick some up as well. Um, but just a basic set of feeler gauges. Now before we can move to adjusting the valves, Part of the process is turning the motor over to get the valves in their different positions so we can adjust them. In order to do that, we need the truck in neutral. So if you've got a, a manual transmission, put the e-brake on, put it in neutral, okay? If you've got an automatic, put the e-brake on or chalk the wheels if you don't have an e-brake, and then turn the key to the second click and just shift it into neutral and just leave it there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. All right, the truck's in neutral now. So the next thing you're gonna to need to do is turn the motor over to get the valves ready to adjust. So I'm gonna put a diagram on the screen right now that's gonna show you where you need the valves in order to adjust certain valves, okay? So if you look at this diagram, you'll see uh, the, the clearance for the intake valves is 1,000th and the clearance for the exhaust valves is 2,000th. What you're gonna do is turn the engine over until you've got number one at top dead center. And when number one's at top dead center, it also means number six is at crossover. Once you have number one at top dead center, you're gonna adjust the intake on valves one, two, and four. And you're gonna adjust the exhaust valves on valves one, three, and five. Once you get that done, you'll turn the engine over more by hand so you have number six at top dead center, meaning that number one is at crossover. Once you're there, you're gonna adjust the intake of one, three, and five, and the exhaust of two, four, and six. You want the lock nuts torqued to 18 foot-pounds. And another note is the, as far as the valves go in each of the cylinders, the valves that are closer to the front of the engine are the intake valves, and the valves that are closer to the firewall are the exhaust valves. For each cylinder so each cylinder obviously has an intake and an exhaust valve so there's a couple ways you can turn the engine over by hand one way that you'll see a lot of people do is this it's called a barring tool and there's a cover plate right in front of the bell housing or if you have an automatic transmission right in front of the flex plate uh, that you can just pop off with a screwdriver stick this in there stick a ratchet in it and you can turn the engine over that way. I'm not the biggest fan of this method because there's an easier way. So let me show you that. 
My favorite method is to grab a 22 millimeter socket, okay? And not a deep well socket, just a normal socket. And this fits on the alternator nut right here, okay? And then all you do is you crank it backwards. So I'll turn this over using that alternator bolt and you'll see the valve train kind of turn as well. All right, so what you want to do is turn it and there is a timing pin back under the injection pump uh, that you can uh, use to find top dead center. The way I like to use is basically turn it and then when, when you feel it kind of release, you'll see this is pretty tight. This is pretty loose. That's really tight there. So what you do, I'm going to pull that diagram up real quick. And you'll see, so if we're at top dead center, exhaust one, three, and five should be relatively loose enough to adjust. So if we test one, that's got some play in it. Three, that does, and five as well, okay? So without using that timing pin, it's kind of trial and error, but you just have to get it to where the right pattern matches up. So now I've got intake three, five, and six that have some play. An exhaust two, four, and six that have play. So we have number six at top dead center on the diagram. So what we're gonna do is adjust all those and then turn it over until we've got number one at top dead center. So I'm gonna show you how to do this on exhaust valve in the second cylinder. So what you need to do is break this lock nut loose, okay? Don't need to loosen it a ton. And remember, exhaust is the back, intake is the front. Okay, so we've got that loose. If we're dealing with the exhaust valve, we need our 20 thousandth. Feeler gauge right there. Okay, and all we do is slide this between the rocker and the spring. And this just has way too much play in it as it is right now. So grab your flathead screwdriver. Keep trying to move that. And what you want, you want to be able to move that feeler gauge with just a little bit of resistance. You don't want it so tight that you can't move it at all like that. And you don't want it so loose that it just slides in and out. So there should be some resistance. Okay, so right there I've got a little bit of resistance. Now this is the tricky part. So I've got my screw right there. I'm going to tighten my lock nut. And you're going to notice as you try and tighten the lock nut, it's going to turn the screw a little bit extra. Especially when you torque it down. Okay, so I just kind of got that hand tight. Still pretty good there. I'm gonna put my torque wrench on it. Okay, there's 18 foot-pounds. And that's still pretty good. Okay, a little bit of resistance. So you're gonna get frustrated on some of these. You're gonna adjust them and you're gonna torque it down and put your feeler gauge in there again and it's gonna be stuck or it's not gonna go in. So uh, you just have to play with it, practice it. Uh, what you'll find yourself doing is setting it to where you need it with the screw and then just backing it off a hair so that you can tighten the nut down and then lock the lock nut down to the correct torque spec and then it usually sits just right but some you know i've done this in some valves it takes me four or five six times to finally get it in some valves it's just uh, one time and i get it right okay so i'm going to go through and do these we'll turn it over and do the other half all right so i've got the exhaust valves done heading to the intake valves Remember, 
It's a different threshold for the intake valve, so take it to one thousandth. Okay, don't keep your two thousandths that you use for the exhaust valve. So I'm gonna stick that in there. So that's too loose. Okay, so I've got those three exhaust valves and intake valves all adjusted, so I'm going to turn the engine over. Okay, so I've got it turned over now. We're going to do exhaust 1, 3, and 5 and intake 1, 2, and 4. All right, so those are all adjusted. A um, couple things just to add on here. Uh, some people, uh, they'll crack all the injector lines to let some of that compression out of the cylinders as they're turning it over. Um, I didn't have to do that, but you may have to. Um, the other thing I'm gonna get in here is if you see the mating surface for the valve cover gaskets, you'll notice like right here, little piece of debris we move back you'll see a little bit you know right there on that right side so my preference what I like to do is get a q-tip and just gently go and make sure all those mating surfaces are all cleaned up now the valve cover gaskets on here are reusable I just make sure they're nice and clean on that surface um, I would replace them if they were dry and cracked these are fairly new even though they're a little bit dirty uh, these are totally fine, but if yours are dry and cracked, replace them. The two best options are straight from Cummins, and the other one are Felpro. Those are the two best options. They seal the best, and they last the longest. All the other ones seem to leak or, or dry up too quick. So I'm going to put all these on and get this all buttoned up. Another thing, when you put these valve covers on, I like to seat the gasket onto the cover first and then set it on. Um, because if you get this in, in the lip of the valve cover doesn't seat into the gasket, you'll get leaks. So just make sure it's all sealed nicely. All right, lastly, grab your 15 millimeter wrench and you're going to tighten down all the valve cover bolts. What I do is tighten them down until they give me resistance and then just a little bit more, but they don't need to be super duper tight. Right there, there. All right, so that's all there is to it. That's all done. That took me about 25 minutes filming it. So uh, really doesn't take very long. Make sure you also remember to take your ratchet off the alternator, or if you use the barring tool, make sure to pull it out of there. You're going to be in for a surprise when you start it back up, okay? Also remember, it's in neutral, so 
especially for people with an automatic, if you're not used to it being in neutral when it's just sitting, go right now, put it back into park so you don't have any accidents, okay? So I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, this is a basic maintenance item. There's a lot of videos on YouTube of how to do this, but I figured I'd show you guys, my subscribers, how I do it and some of the tips and tricks that I use. I hope you liked the video. Please like the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe below. Uh, we've done a lot to this truck so far, so we got tons more planned. we got things going with the crew cab too. So until the next video, we'll see you guys then.